The Richard C. Meyer case has ended. Essentially, he lost. Hello, everybody. This is Preston Poulter here with Pocket Jacks Comics, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's been so much stuff that happened in the last few days here. Uh, Ethan and Roe got into a squabble on the Oz show, and what was revealed is a number of things. Some interesting receipts were dropped, but essentially there is, seems to be a sex scandal that's emerging around Mandy Summers. Uh, as you're going to hear in the clips, uh, Mandy was, you know, kind of having these sexting relationships with various people. It sounds like m multiple people in Ethan's circle who had clout. It's, you know, like, uh, Ro is being a little like, oh, you'll find out later, but there's an audio call between Mandy and I. And, you know, Ro's claiming that Mandy's blackmailing people. And Ethan's claiming that Kyle was harassing Mandy and he had to tell her to pipe down. And then Liam later claims that uh, Roe came to him and said, hey, you better shut up about the whole Mandy Summers thing. So it's hard to tell exactly what's going on right now, but this should be an emerging story. I am expecting it to grow and it's going to be yet another black eye to go with, uh, to go with the Ethan circle. Right up there with... Richard C. Meyer losing lawsuit. Okay, let's go ahead and get into that. Um, all right. When I say lost, I mean that uh, the Comicsgate faithful poured in a bunch of cash to fund Richard Meyer's lawsuit. And then yesterday they announced uh, a joint statement. Let me go ahead and read. On September 19, 2018, plaintiff and if Richard Meyer filed a lawsuit in the United States District Court for the Western District of Texas against defendant Mark Wade that asserted claims of tortious interference with contract and defamation arising out of intended publication of a comic book by an actor press entitled Jawbreakers. Following jurisdictional discovery and motions practice, a first amended complaint was filed on July 24, 2019. Since the filing of the lawsuit, Jawbreakers has successfully published and COVID-19 has significantly impacted the world around us. Not sure how that's relevant to anything. Uh, upon consideration of all the circumstances, the parties have jointly decided that it is in their best interest of all concerned and the comic book community at large for this litigation to end, and Mr. Meyer has decided to voluntarily dismiss the lawsuit. Neither party has admitted any liability or responsibility, can claim to have achieved any victory, and both have agreed to assume their own fees and costs. So if this had gone to trial and Richard C. Meyer had prevailed, it's doubtful he could have gotten his cost because in the American legal system, usually that requires some special circumstances, either a statute or some type of contractual provision that would allow it. And here there weren't any. So Richard C. Meyer wasn't going to be able to recover his court costs. Mark Wade was going to be able to recover his court costs. So when they're both saying we're going to assume our own, you know, costs and fees up to this point, then they probably weren't going to be able to recover those at trial anyway. In essence, Richard C. Meyer has given up. And, you know, if you look, info card, you can go check it out. I have talked about this before. His case was pretty weak. It was rather tenuous. Uh, damages were going to be a big problem. And there's all these other things of, oh, he's claiming he, he can't because... Wade, uh, you know, libeled him so harshly as a white supremacist, well, he can't work with any artist in the United States. Like, well, that's not true. And he didn't have any... Well, he talked about the publishing deal he had with Simon Schuster. Uh, the case was really kind of a loser from the start. Makes you wonder why Comicsgate poured so much money into it, doesn't it? Uh, before we get into all that, though, I do want to say uh, the... White Widow metal cover sold on eBay for right at $125, so fantastic. That was the one that's graded 9.4. This one's graded 9.6, so that's going to go up in a week or so. Be on the lookout for that. But, you know, link down in the description to the eBay store. I encourage you to uh, make me one of your favorite sellers so you'll know when this goes up, as well as the other books. There is a package right now that everyone might be interested in. It features all the issues I put out in a variant cover form. Let's Let's go through that real quick. All right, so here's the lot that is currently up. We've got uh, the variant cover of Guinevere 1, right? We've got the variant cover of Guinevere 2, only 100 issued on those. And I've got the Miss Sashi Pasties cover of Guinevere 3. So we got all the Guineveres that there is to have. Here's White Lily 1 variant cover. Here's variant covers for White Lily 2 and 3. Uh, White Lily 4, I only issued 100 completely virgin covers of four. You get one of those. Oh, here's a lenticular of three. 
and the Lesbians in Planes, uh, you know, fan made cover by, by Booster Kiwi. Only a hundred of those issued. Oh, yeah, only one of these. This is a printer prototype. They wanted to try out kind of a different comic size that didn't go over well, so. So only one of these is in existence. So that is part of the lot that's right here, printer prototype of issue four. And here, this was, uh, I booked a comic show and I had hoped to sell White Lily one there at the show, but the art team wasn't done with it. This was back when I was having a hard time getting them to finish. I've kind of swapped around the art team meanwhile. But yeah, I only had eight pages to my name back then, so I made up this little eight page ash can of White Lily one, so that is also part of the lot. So uh, check that out, link in the description on the eBay store. All right, let's go ahead and get into the stuff regarding Roe and Ethan over on the Oz show. The tradition of Festivus begins with the airing of grievances. We must have the airing of grievances, and of course, war campaign as well as a number of others, are kind of stepping up to the comic skate table and saying, you know, I bought into this Ethan hype and all I got was this crummy crowdfund. Having been covering comic skate for a while, I have noticed there's a pattern where Ethan will be like, Jesus, uh, bring me bring me the sick and, the what, and I will heal them. Bring me your comic creators. I will promote them. Great things will happen. And then later on, people will be like, you know, Ethan, I've, I've noticed some things are amiss. He's like, you're, you're a crazy stalker. Uh, he did it to me, and I didn't even get any promotion out of it. What did I do? I, I did what he told me to, and I tagged him on Twitter. Uh, uh, okay, for that, I'm a crazy stalker. And, of course, so is Ro, and so is Liam. Uh, that one probably fits. Uh, it, I don't know if Ethan has any response to criticism other than you're a crazy stalker. We'll have to see, but... So far, that's the excuse he keeps going to, and uh, I guess the faithful are eating it up. All right, let me show you how this cycle works. So first, we have a great example here from Nasser Rabadi, who has been worshipping Ethan really hard. Now, keep in mind, later on, when Ethan screws Nasser, it's going to be, oh, don't pay any attention to Nasser, he's a crazy stalker. Look how many videos he made of me. And this apology will probably be front and center here, right? Like, look how pathetic Nasser is. He's a crazy stalker. But right now, Nasser's playing ball. So, of course, Ethan isn't going to <laughs> recognize that. This is kind of strange obsessive behavior. But Ethan wants the obsessive behavior. He's there. He's like, are you hailing me enough? Are you? Uh, he'll test your loyalty. Are you loyal to me? Is it all in line? And then, when it's not, well, you were a crazy stalker. Look at the things you did. So let, let's start here with Nasser Rabadi being made to apologize to Ethan because he called him a Star-Lord and had Pan on to antagonize testify. Let's go through that. Ethan uh, hated the title I had. I guess I need to explain what this joke was. Uh, I love Ethan. I respect Ethan. I look up to him. I didn't mean anything by it. I guess Ethan did. Uh, he didn't like the title, and I guess it didn't do me any good that I had uh, a war campaigner on. I didn't really know that they had dropped any DMs. Uh... So the DM in question, Ro dropped a DM uh, of Ethan talking to, looked like, you know, one of those Ro and War Campaign channels. And Ethan was saying, this I think was like from April or May, and Ethan was saying, you know, people say I can't trust War Campaign, but how can I trust John Malin? That's back when there was kind of that tug of war between War Campaign and and, you know, the, the, the Jack camp where you had the, you know, Anna, Cecil, Kelsey, and John Malin channel. Um, and they were basically at war for Ethan's affection. And Ethan ultimately chose, you know, the, the Jack contention. But this was kind of during that time. And Ethan was like, people tell me I can't trust War Campaign, but I know I can't trust John Malin because he's the one who aired... Uh, who was dropping my DMs where I was calling the people in Antarctic Press a bunch of faggots. And John Malin was apparently like, oh my goodness, uh, I have gay family members. You know, uh, I, I can't believe Ethan's doing it or whatever. Um, Douglas Ernst was named as, uh, I, I'm guess in piecing this together, it seems like Douglas, uh, Doug Ernst was one of the people that John Malin was dropping the DMs to. I did follow up with Doug Ernst, and, and he verified that, yes, yes, that did happen. So. Roe uh, Ro dropped DMs between him and EVS. 
Uh, I guess that's what happened. Well, I didn't know it was going to make him uh, angry. I didn't know they had dropped any DMs. Uh, I thought it was just going to be funny to see Testify get yelled at. And quite honestly, I thought it would just get me viewers in here to sell my book to. Uh, I didn't uh, expect it to make anybody mad. We know you have no guile, Nasser. Kick war campaign? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a war campaigner. I'm not friendly with those guys. Like I said, they were just they were just uh, attacking me on Twitter. Quite honestly, all I thought would happen out of having Pan versus Testify on here was I thought I would get people watching to show my book to. I'm not friends with War Campaign. I'm not friends with Testify. Just thought it'd be funny. Um, I didn't mean to offend Ethan. And like I said, the title saying Ethan's uh, Star-Lord was all just in reference to this right here. I even said that on the stream was this person here saying that the highest rank of the Space Force should be a Star-Lord. That's just what it was in reference to, and I guess that made uh, Ethan upset. He thought I meant it in the other way of, uh, I think it's on here somewhere, of Star-Lord being bi. I did not mean it like that. I think that's how he took it, and that is not what I meant. It's really not what I meant. This is what I meant right here, was just the Space Force Guardians thing. I didn't mean to uh, upset Ethan. Uh, having uh, those people on was just because I thought it would get viewers for me to show my book to. Uh, well, you, I didn't know they dropped any Ethan DMs, and I didn't even send Man of Sex the link. Vicky says you have poor judgment. Well, I know that now. No, it's not. I just thought I'd come on here and apologize to Ethan. Um, I don't know if he's watching this right now or not, but I'm sorry, Ethan. I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean it in any bad way. I didn't mean it inappropriately, man. So I'm sorry, Ethan. So... There we go. Nasser coming out and offering a very heartfelt apology. And Ethan has apparently accepted, so all is forgiven. Although he does kind of keep score, so you're on thin ice now, Nasser. Just, just FYI. And eventually, when Nasser is cast out, of course, this will be Exhibit A. And, well, Nasser's just a pathetic stalker, man. He's always on my coat. I've got, keep these bitches off of me. I, I, I can... As a writer, Ethan's lines are pretty easy to write because he says the same stuff over and over again. So the dropping of that DM by Roe was really just leading off the airing of grievances here. And then we really got into it on the Oz Show. Hey, info card if you want to go listen to a five-hour live stream where there's just a ton of comic skate drama. And it ends with a, a Liam Gray appearance. So it's if you love Oz drama, it's perfect. Here, Roe is getting very specific about the things he's going to, the info he has, the insider receipts he's got, and what he's going to be dropping in the future. Mandy Summers factors very prominently. Roe claims he has audio, maybe video, I don't know, of a, a conversation between him and Mandy, where Mandy is saying, there's been sex stuff between me and Ethan's colorist, Kyle Ritter, and I'm going to air it unless I get special favors. Now, that's what Roe is claiming. He hasn't produced any evidence of that. Ethan does kind of give a tacit admission later on that, yes, there was some sex stuff going on between Kyle and Mandy. The way Ethan's going to explain it is that Kyle didn't know when enough was enough, and Ethan had to kind of step in and go simmer down, boy, and then everything is all hunky-dory fine. Uh, as I mentioned, Liam did come on towards the end of the show, and Liam uh, is also somehow involved, and Liam is going to claim that he was aware of Mandy Summers or was hearing something about, like, Mandy Summers blackmailing or something, and that he was going to Ethan and saying, hey, Ethan, I think you need to deal with this, and then Roe came to Liam and said... Hey, Liam, if you ever want to get promoted, you ever want to get on Ethan's show and get money for your comic book, you're not going to mention the Mandy Summers stuff. So there's three different perspectives on the Mandy Summers situation. I don't know. We're going to hear Roe kind of explaining the, the lack of ethics and how what a dirty business he was involved in. We're going to start, by the way, with Pan explaining uh, why War Campaign solicits dick, dick pics. Later on, Roe's going to deny that War Campaign solicits dick pics. Roe has also kind of decided to label his show a parody show. By that, he now gets to say, anytime he said anything, you go, I was, it was... It's a joke. It's all just a joke. joke. Why are you sending dick pics to each other? Several reasons. It's like a brotherhood thing, like number one. And second, it's like leverage, you know? It's like blood in, blood out, penis in, penis out. You can't leave. I got pictures of your dick. 
<clears throat> what do you think about the fact that um, even those who are closest to Ethan, like he like absolutely what? doesn't trust them? What do you think of that? I mean, I dropped that DM right yesterday about uh, between him and John Malin. What do you think of that? Well, I feel sad that he can't trust you, Ro. I feel sad that war campaign or John Malin, sort of, or, or John Malin, or or anyone. I mean, this poor Tug. guy's. You know, right. Yeah, Tug. you probably can't trust Tug. You probably can't trust Yellow Flash. <clears throat> what about these? Liam, okay, how about, what, a, I mean, right. what about the women? You right. remember when everybody was going on of, oh, the SJWs always eat their own? Right, these women who are blackmailing him because they've had sexual inappropriate conduct with Kyle. Oh, His uh, oh, coloring? Yeah. Oh, shit. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I got audio tape of Mandy admitting that she's got masturbation videos with kyle and that she's ready to use them if she doesn't get her way i want to see that. how does that that's make you black, feel that's blackmail dude can you see why somebody like myself doesn't want to have anything to do with these people like they're so dirty that i don't want to have anything to do with them can you see that well, time period are we talking about from you being aware of this behavior and, and you <laughs> deciding that you no longer want to have anything to do with these people oh man about a, over a year ago right for me the turning point was over a year ago when uh just around the new year's show right so ethan invited us to new year's and man i get on there and you got right adam unfriended so, adam, right so he was on it okay and i got this guy talking about doug to Naple, and these like they can't let it go if you have an argument with something with somebody at some point you gotta let it go dude and i was like man you guys are crazy it's new year's eve you just made all this money on your new campaign. It's like, holy shit, is something wrong with you, right? For us on our parody show, and it is a parody show, right? On our parody show, we make jokes. They're jokes, then they're done. The show's over. Life goes back to normal. These people... Except for the part where Pan shows up at Wizard World Portland. These people have something wrong with them. At some point, man, I want to extricate myself, and that's what I did. This is why you don't see me on these kind of drama streams, typically. I don't join in because... I'm trying to be plus. I'm trying to be something better. All right. So in our next video, we're going to get into the confrontation between Roe and EVS. Big drama explosion on that one. Um, I I'm put a little bit of Roe here denying that there was ever any dick pics and now kind of going with a, it's a parody show. That was just a joke. So on Twitter, where he was talking to Praetorian and saying, hey, we got pictures of your dick. You know, keep it in line. Um, it's a joke. That was... It's all a joke. <laughs> There's nobody sent me any dick pics. There's nothing like that going on. There never was anything like that. The, you know what we try to do with Comic Skate? We we're trying to hold things together. Okay? We were trying to keep people together. We solved a lot of problems behind the scenes. When this stuff came out, with Kyle and Mandy, and she was trying to blackmail. Man, I told Ethan, and I've got those DMs where I'm saying to him, I go, dude, you got to come out, man. You got to just get come clean. Then he was getting blackmailed by Shay as well as Mandy. I I cover this stuff, but I don't have a perfect now. I'm not her. I'm not sure who Shay is, but apparently she was also in on the blackmailing of Ethan over inappropriate conduct with Kyle. I mean, dude, this is what Comiskate is. It's a fucking disaster. I don't want to have anything to do with it. It's too dirty. And we got the DMs. I got the chat talking about, uh, you know, drop the DMs, this and that. Well, we will. I'll, still, I'll slowly put them out, right? Especially when I see stuff like this behavior with this Donald thing, right, yesterday. Like, you know, Ethan, like how many people can you eat from your own circle? At some point, dude, this is it, man. I'm not really mad at Ethan. I'm, man, the dude's a disappointment. The guy's a disappointment. Uh, let me go ahead and address the Donald thing. So uh, Roe and War Campaign are, are making, uh, taking issue, I should say, with Ethan making an offer saying, hey, we have a Richard C. Meyer project coming in. Speaking of, uh, there's there's a, a great project out by Richard C. Meyer with Nalwal doing some absolutely amazing artwork. I mean, look at that stuff. I mean, tell me that's just not spectacular mouthwatering art that you absolutely want. So uh, check that out. I mean, it's hard to imagine improving on this, but Don DeLay... I think technically might be a better artist because, you know, uh, he can actually draw. Uh, so Ethan apparently made an offer that, oh, hey, we have a Richard C. Meyer script, and then we'll have, uh, I'll offer you, Donald DeLay, uh, a chance to come in and do the art for it, and then your payment 
will go towards paying off your debt with Nasser. And Rowan War Campaign are taking issue with that. Uh, I, I think there's, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I mean, uh, look, sorry to have to come to Ethan's defense on this one, but if he's offering Don DeLay an opportunity to work his debt off with Nasser, uh, why wouldn't he? I mean, that, that's, a, that's a positive thing all around. Uh, of course, you know, Nasser had to do the obscene, oh my God, I'm sorry, if he, if he wants to get in on that gravy train. Uh, that That's just the price of admission when you're in the Ethan circle. But the idea that offering Donald an opportunity to resolve his debt through a job uh, is is fine. I don't know why uh, why Rose picking on that. Man, fucking disappointment. Truly, truly. Uh, let's talk about what you're doing here to Kyle. Uh, who joined you guys in uh, backstage shenanigans. Now, notice Ethan says you, Roe, and Morgan Mate joined with Kyle in the backstage shenanigans on the Women of Comics Gate. Uh, now, I'm going to just take a random guess and say Anna probably not involved because she had her own social media following. And if you have your own social media following, you are exempt from ever being called a crazy stalker or maybe from having to send lewds to people. But I'm not sure what is what exactly the backstage stuff is that's going on, but I can imagine if you're you know, a fairly attractive woman who's out to say, hey, here's my book and here's my butt, the men of Comics Gate might be like, yeah, show me some more. And of course they have the leverage of, and we'll promote you and we'll bring you money. And Comics Gate becomes kind of like this weird comic book related strip club. I, I don't know. But uh, th this is an interesting story regarding Mandy Summers, and it could erupt into a, a sexual harassment scandal. I'm not sure. It's with uh, the women of Comics Gate. Look, and let me talk for one second. You know for a fact that this was your issue, right? This was between no. you and these women. Yes, it was, and I have the DMs that, that say so. You, so. you should drop those uh, DMs that say okay, that this I have my a, I have issue. an audio call with Mandy where she talks about this. So this is it, man. Don't don't call me out on truth. Do your thing. Go and do your thing. Your audience is dwindling. That's my personal opinion. You and not only that, by creating this every by couching everything in this dramatic stuff, right? Trying to incite some kind of hot drama to sell your bro, book. Bro, what are you doing right now? You you burnt bro, out all these guys. Right now, what are you doing to Don? Ethan loves to play the Uno reverse card. So the idea that you're using drama to sell your book. Well, what are you doing? It, it, Ethan never tires of that one. What did you do to Donald? I didn't do anything. What are you doing to, to that guy? You're sure you did. I didn't do anything you to created Donald. a problem, right? You created a problem for and him. You created a and narrative. And then you decided to create also a solution and for you him created a narrative. by making him do work for you for free that he's, you're then going to pay. Uh, again, I got to come to Ethan's defense on this one. It's not for free if you're paying off a debt. Pay out someone else for. You've done this to everybody. At some point, dude, at some point, you get a reputation and everybody sees your true face. And that's where we're at now. So these two go on. Road does talk over Ethan a lot. What I find interesting is that Ethan kind of lets it happen. Ultimately, he has Oz mute him, so Ethan can go on to wax eloquently about what a crazy stalker Roe was, and gosh, I should have seen it. Okay, Ethan. But uh, what's interesting here is now they're going to bring up the topic of Tim Lin, and Ethan's going to go, well, you guys were created to harass Tim Lin. Uh, okay, and who wanted that to happen? I, it, it's weird that we have, you know, these two who have been hand in glove on attacking creators. And now when we have a creator who's become very successful. And again, congratulations to Tim Lin and Mark Pellegrini for Cayman America 2 topping 100 grand. Uh, that was so significant. It gets brought up in this conversation between Roe and Ethan. Let's let's give that a listen. Because Great. you guys were to set the trouble and all the unhappiness in Comicscape. People are doing better without you guys. And you guys are not doing better without me. I said all, all those people said, out there, please, all those creators, right? Guys those guys could... aren't even breaking 10K now. So that's not the not the case at all. Those guys are not even breaking five, six, seven. I thought you were going to. You know, I do got to say, like, a lot of the people that, you know, the small creators that were, you know, at. at I was kind of sniping at them. They were kind of sniping at me uh, who were trying to get in on the Ethan train, like Michael Derrick and whatnot. 
Yeah, their, their campaigns have not grown. Winger got thrown out of Comicsgate. Uh, I'm sorry, Winger, but a- after you get exiled, all those loyalty bucks you've been saving up, you can't cash them in. They're non-refundable, man. Uh, happens. And, and Roe is right to point out that, okay, maybe Ethan's got his weird pumped up uh, numbers that no one should really believe. But if you look at like the rank and file comics gate guy, the the, you know, the amateur who's putting a book together, unless your name happens to be Clint Stoker, you're not doing well. You're going to promote them. I thought you were going to take all those creators and you're going to start promoting them. What happened to that, Ethan? Uh, it's not. No, I, it's not my responsibility to promote. Every no, of course it's not. Of course it's and not. So but I, you did. But you you didn't want. We were doing that, and you said you're going to take up this flack. So what's going on with that? How are these people out there? Or is it just about funneling the money to the couple top guys? Is that what it's about? Which one is it? It's none of those. It's about everybody promoting each other and building a network and making it a pleasant and happy place for people to promote their well, that's comments. The line. That's you the guys, line, oh, you guys, you I got, guys. Yeah, I'm totally with Ro on this. We're like, oh, it's about everybody promoting everybody. It, it, it's the Ethan Van Skyver Ed Friend Show. Just like I said a year ago when I was labeled a crazy stalker. It made it very, very I'm, unhappy I'm not, for people. I'm not, I'm not were really bothered down, whether we hit. You guys taking down Anna's I'm not, sister. I'm not bothered whether for we're hitting 47k, and I stood up for you, or we're hitting 57k, times. or we're hitting 65k, or 100k. Our book Vestige is better than anything you're putting out. Vestige Two is better. It's better. The cover's better. Andrew Quertas' cover is better than what you did. The Black Dragon cover. Our work is better. That's what it is. Tim Lim. Yeah. What happened there? This guy, man, he kept making books. Look at his stuff now, where it's hitting 100 plus mm-hmm. k. He managed to he managed to keep going despite you guys chasing him down. You guys, you guys, <laughs> despite you see, it's not Ethan has no responsibility at all for the ostracization of Tim Lin and the, all the gay ops that were involved in that one. That was all war campaign. You guys you can blame me on all harassing this. Tim Lim. I don't you blame can, you. Yeah, I don't care. Sure. But you guys were founded. Nah, not at all. I don't blame you. I don't care. But I've got to kind of bring it up on, oh, on harassing. Not Tim at all. Lim, the not at all. Not at all, brother. We were... You guys were founded on harassing Tim Lin. Uh, okay, Ethan. Well, maybe you should have at the time said, hmm, maybe I don't want a harassment squad that's going after my competitors, right? You loved it right up until you decided you didn't want it anymore. Money. Talking, Talking about videos of him fingering bunnies or something like that. When what we put you? on a video like that on our parody show, dude, it's, it's a funny. The guy's show. literally fingering a bunny. It's hilarious to show it on a stream and have well, a laugh. I'm glad bro. that he thought it was right? funny the whole time. But and I'm for glad you, succeeded. <laughs> you did all. That. Ethan seems to be putting for an example of, well, Tim Lin didn't think it was funny. I'm sorry, Ethan, weren't you the guy who was saying, I love War Campaign, uh, They everybody that they go after absolutely deserves it? Which you said, by the way. But now you're like, oh yeah, those things he did at Tim Lin, but you shouldn't have done that. So here, Ethan eventually just decides to come back to his old faithful, which is your crazy star. You, Ooh, John Malin, that umbrella guy, Tug, right? All this yeah. shit, man, him and Lola and all this fucking disgusting weird shit you guys have all gotten up to. So you- yeah. By the way, and that was some of the justification for attacking me on the whole revenge porn thing, right? Is, well, you, you, you went after Tug. And the crazy shenanigans between Tug and Lola and what they were doing and smearing, like, you know, the various people that they were going to go after. Uh, uh, oh, okay. And therefore, it's okay to attack Preston. The logic that these people try and use to justify their horrible actions. Doug St. April is a weird fucking guy, right? And I got it. it these are two hypocrites calling each other hypocrite. And Ethan's like, well, you were promoting Tug at the time. Yes. Yes, Ro was. He's a yeah. fucking weird dude. But man, the guy's cleaner than you guys. It's fucking really crazy. At least he's just like... Doug to Maple. He's a weird guy, but he's cleaner than you guys. A straight, honest asshole. Congratulations to Doug to Maple for being a straight, honest asshole. Up there. I mean, well, you're that's fucking... That's a, switch. That is a big switch difference, video. dude. That is a switch. You, you, want, you want to get out there and you want to pretend, you know, on stream that you're this nice, friendly dude. 
man, you're up to too much shit, dude. And eventually people find out. And I, I think that's what we're getting. To. Well, I think, I think so. that Ro, if anybody would know that, then you would have proof of that. And you should actually drop those DMS. You should do it. I, you're threatening to do it. And the DM that you showed. Slowly, 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 Ethan, slowly, slowly. Well, over time. Okay. okay. Over time. Yeah. Make over time. Last, bro. I want you to obsess. I, will. I want you to obsess over me. I'm not obsessed longer. with you, dude. I got a job, bro. Honestly, man. Well, I'm leading dude, a team of programmers. Well, we all have I'm making, I'm making some solid money. We all have you know what jobs. I mean? But yeah, I mean, you just it. got done telling us how disgusted you were that people were still angry. I'm disappointed over Mike in you. Miller last year. I'm disappointed. And it's been six months. It's been six months since you guys yeah, were harassing you talk about You talk about me yeah, on a stream. Still, you I, talk about me on a stream two days ago. Bro, I, I think I what might have that? mentioned your name once in yeah, six months. Well, that's you it. talk about me. Everybody is an obsessed stalker but Ethan. Every day. Paint it any way you like. The bottom line is, is that everything that you've built is suffering because of your behavior. I you've chased no away a lot of that. Something's right. wrong in your head. I mean, right, I'm gonna bring Nasser in, and now I'm gonna pit him against Donald, and now I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna manipulate this dude, and I'm gonna manipulate Mike. I, I do have to uh, now again. I don't think there was anything wrong in Ethan offering Donald work to pay off the Nasser debt, but the idea of oh, let's bring Nasser in because Liam hates Nasser, and now we're gonna kind of ostracize Donald. Um, yes, I, I do think there is a lot of uh, you know kind of weird high you know high school girl lunch table drama of well i'm gonna bring in this person that you guys don't like and i'm gonna praise him to ostracize you uh, liam and fucking play them off against each other shit bro fuck be a fucking man what's wrong with you what the hell is wrong with you you act like a woman dude you act like a little bitch. You do. Bro. You act like a little bitch. You act like a little girl. You know what I mean? With your dramatics and shit. Just be a fucking man. Bro, when you... I act gay, when I act gay, I'm acting gay, dude. You're a fucking Star Lord over here, man. Holy shit. Fucking hysterical woman can't let any grudges go. Dude, that's what you do. It's like people, fuck, man. It's bro, gross. What are you doing right now? And finally, we have Ethan ordering the silencing of Roe so he can accuse him of being a crazy stalker. Uh, I have people who are infatuated with me, and it's very strange. I didn't think Roe was going to be one of them, but I probably should have realized. Yeah, that. it's very strange, but it keeps happening over and over and over again because you're just so awesome, Ethan. I mean, that's ultimately the real response is these people just hate me because I'm awesome. I said he was going to be one of them. Because Rose spent two years calling me Caesar, worshiping all the things you did, all the virtue signals you gave Ethan are now evidence of how screwed up you are. My every word kowtowing to me. Uh, Why would anyone kowtow to you, Ethan? <laughs> uh, and the whole time he was behind the scenes making people miserable in Comicsgate and making it hard for people to succeed and make a living here. Uh, I decided it definitely is displacing some responsibility, which let's face it, blame more campaign. That's what they were there for. One point that, you know, I needed, I needed row. I needed these guys who pledged allegiance to me to do me one favor and stop harassing uh, John Malin, Cecil and Anna. They would not do it. Uh, Roe has been behind the scenes seething over this. Uh, it's very strange. I, a lot of people have theories about what Ro's endgame was. He wanted more power within Comicsgate. Uh, Mandy and uh, Mandy and others may have been having a little fun on the internet with Kyle. Uh, Kyle is a deaf mute. Uh, Kyle probably had a little trouble letting it go. Mute him again, please, Oz, or I'm going to go mute him. Uh, and uh, Mandy came to me and asked me to see if I would talk to Kyle to make it stop. And that, I said, Kyle, you got to stop doing that. You got to leave these girls alone. Uh, Kyle has a big heart and he uh, had a little trouble uh, not, you know, having uh, these fun little flings on the Internet with uh, some women in Comicsgate. Uh, it's who he is. He's dealt with it. Some women. So clearly more than one. Uh, and uh, Roe had threatened to expose that for a long time. He said, once people find out about what's going on there. Now notice. All right. So Roe said. Mandy was threatening to expose it. Now Ethan's saying Roe was threatening to expose it. It's going to blow up Comicsgate. And I said, well, and I said this to Mandy. I said, Mandy, that's on you. I mean, you're welcome to say whatever you would like about this. This is something that happened to you. Uh, you, can, uh, you can expose this and talk about this whenever you're ready to. 
Uh, and Mandy said, no, I'm good. This uh, explosion from Roe and war campaign just goes to signify the fact that I think they're upset that their campaigns are not making what they were hoping they were making. Uh, I think they're really still angry. If only they could have been in my circle and gotten the money. They've left and now they're upset. They're not doing as well. Oh, okay. Really still angry, but the rest of us are happy. So after making that pronouncement, Ethan leaves and just snipes from the chat. Uh, but at the end of the stream, we have Liam Gray come on and... You know, it's crazy. He starts to make a bit of sense. Let, let's listen to, to Liam Gray here. What he does is he tells you, yeah, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Right. And then you wait for the help or you say, hey, will you help me out? You said you're going to help me. And then he ghosts you. Yes. Ethan absolutely does that, which is not normal. And then what happens is people get pissed off and he pretends, oh, I'm not keeping up with this. I don't know. He lies. He pretends. And then he... All right. let me go ahead and say when Ethan did that to me, I looked at him and said, hmm, this person's insane. And from that point forward, I knew like, OK, let's do the math. We have a crazy person who has influence over the Internet. This is going to be a shit show. All I need to do is cover it. And I just started covering it. And then Ethan's like, you're a crazy stalker. OK, Ethan, you're the sane one. He'll have laughing conversations with it about in back rooms. He'll pretend that he doesn't know what's going on while he sends other people to attack smaller creators and fuck with their business for the lols, right? For the lols to create content. And then, and then, right, when you don't, when you don't get the support that he promises that he would give you, he goes, oh, this is all about getting on my show. This is all about getting my platform. They're so jealous of me. They're jealous that I'm making more money of them, that I'm making more money than I'm making more money than them. It couldn't possibly have anything to do with underhanded tactics. It couldn't have anything to do with the fact that the customers that were in Comicsgate were here because they believed in an ideal and a set of values. And like I said, I'm I got news for you, Liam. They didn't really believe in that. They, they, they were there for the lulls as well. I'm not, I'm not cleaning up. When I went to him, we're going to, you know, oh, I don't know anything. I don't know anything about this. I don't know anything about other people's business. I'm, I'm such a delicate flower. I'm just, I'm just a fucking poor little guy. Bullshit. Bullshit. When I went to you about the Kyle thing and let you know that this shit was going on and it needed to be handled in a way, you pretended you knew nothing. You had completely ignored it and then not. How widespread was this that Liam Gray is going to Ethan and saying, hey, your colorist is a problem? And not 10 minutes later, you had Ro come to me and say, hey, if you want to get on Ethan's show, Liam, you don't go talking about this stuff. You shouldn't talk about this stuff. First time. <laughs> so there you got Liam Gray coming out, dropping that sentiment. And in response, Ethan has called Liam Gray a crazy stalker and has dropped his DMs about how, uh, you know, he was like, look, bro, I'm, I'm there for you. Just reach out. You got a friend. I, I look, I, I've played clips of Liam Gray just absolutely waxing eloquent about just pure love and admiration for the human sunbeam. Um, all I got to say is everybody ends up in the same fate, right? Eventually, everybody's crazy stalker. It's Ethan World. All right, so here's a clip of uh, of Ro, both from the Oz show where he's pointing out, I think rightly, that, hey, uh, I understood the math that by stepping away from Ethan and refusing to halt my attacks on, you know, Anna and Malin and those folks, that I was foregoing future dollars. And Ethan explained that to him and, you know, pretty explicit terms. It's not like, oh, wow, a big surprise. Um, so I think Ethan puts it out there enough of if you play ball, you'll get money. And of course, if you're criticizing me, well, that's just because you're bitter that your campaigns aren't doing better. Uh, uh, okay, so Ro, I think, offers a correct criticism of I understood those risks and I accepted them. Whether you believe that or not, that's up to you. This idea that Ethan's saying that I'm upset that we didn't make as much money. Look, I could have just played ball like everybody else. We were already in a position at the top tier of Comicsgate, right? I mean, yes, they were. Right? By Ethan's side. I could have just shut my mouth, do as I'm, as I'm told, and just, you know what I mean? It would have been okay. I would have made 150 k plus, but I didn't. Not because I'm better, but because I got a code. So... That's, you know, I, I, I got to say, I, I resonate with some of the things Liam say. I resonate with some of the things Rose said. But at, I'm not 
signing off on these people as, you know, good people. I would just say we all seem to have kind of a shared experience here of being painted with the vast brush of crazy stalker. We all make comic books uh, and we've all kind of observed a similar pattern of behavior. Uh, now Rose going to go on, uh, this is on his own show, to compare my marriage to Johnny Depp Amber Heard. To me, like, I'm not into the whole pornography stuff. It's like I remember with Preston Poulter, you know, and whatever unfortunate stuff happened to him, I personally feel like he was sexually assaulted, abused by his wife. I feel like Preston... That's a hot take. Preston Poulter, if you feel sorry for Johnny Depp, then you should feel sorry for Preston Poulter. That's what I mean, okay? If you're all like... I agree. If you're We're all doing... like... Yeah, if you're... A Festivus miracle. <laughs> If you're all like Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp, oh my God, Amber Heard shit in his bed, she punched him in the mouth, fuck, I would feel, then you should do the same thing. Because basically, Preston Poulter is Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp is Preston Poulter. The Festivus miracles continue. We have yet more airing of grievances. Here is another DM dropped from Ro. Apparently, this was from Ethan to General Devereaux, a, a war campaigner. Uh, and here on, you know, 10 to 2019 is Ethan contacting him and saying, hey, uh, can you dildo meme uh, this dog onto, you know, Edwin Boyette's face for me? Now, previously, Ethan's been saying, hey, I don't know. I don't know what those folks do. I can't police my fans, right? I can't police my fans, except they're doing exactly what I want them to, so why would I police my fans? Just like I've been saying, right? Remember when Ethan was like, oh, hey, Everybody, go dig up dirt on Preston, especially everybody in war campaign. Like, he has been using them to do his bidding, and now they're probably a little bitter that, you know, he abandoned them. I think, you know, just like so many, they wanted to cash in their loyalty bucks and have it be worth something. So sorry. Oh, well. Um, I mean, look, if I'm Ethan, I'm going to start to be kind of nervous. I mean, look, these guys might be dropping evidence that might be useful, uh... Somebody pursuing a claim against Ethan. I don't know. If I'm if I'm Ethan, I'm nervous. But I'm sure he's going to come out and just accuse people of being crazy stalkers and it's all going to be resolved. And, uh, hey, 2021 is going to be a great year. What can I say? Well, there's going to be a ton of more things that will develop. Uh, next week, I'm expecting, uh, just going forward into 2021, the Comics Gate flame is on fire and it... <laughs> <laughs> it's heading right into the mountains. Um, except, of course, of course, for all the Indiegogo campaign funny money, where Ethan's like, oh, yeah, of course, I, uh, I just made, I made a fortune. Uh, he could be backing himself and inflating his own numbers, but would he do that? Never. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a happy holiday season. This has been Preston Poulter with Pocket Jacks Comics. Thank you very much for your time. Take care.